Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I ended up reading in the month of May. So it was, I think May has been my best month ever. I read a total of eight books, which is just completely blows my mind, but some of them were, two of them were fairly short and one of them I finished in a day. So yeah, I think that was playing in part of it, but I feel like these are kind of all over. They're mostly crime series focus but there is like a historical fiction a non-fiction another like th like thriller and then a kind of short story type thing so it's well like i feel like it cover a lot of different bases in here um so yeah without further ado let's get started so starting out i first have in her tracks by robert Dagoni, and this is the newest novel in the tracy crosswhite series but because this is like the eighth or ninth book in the series i don't want to spoil too much about this but the general premise of the series is that we follow a girl named tracy who is a homicide detective in seattle and she ended up becoming a homicide detective because her sister ended up going missing when she was in her early 20s and so it kind of follows her path of overcoming the trauma of that experience but then also her working on different cases so in this one in particular Tracy ends up taking up a new position uh, where she's specifically focusing on cold cases and it kind of goes off from there but I think the cold case aspect of, of like this series in particular because I feel like even prior to Tracy getting this new position it was always dealt with some cold case aspect to it which I really enjoy I think that makes it really unique as well because it's it's different than like the stereotype typical like crimes that just happened like I feel like the cold cases is there's like you kind of have to dig more into the history and especially if there's something like 20 30 years if, if it's like that long it makes it fun and unique and I really like it I love this series um, as I said but this one I think is my least favorite so far I just felt like such a big disconnect between Tracy and here in particular it was hard for me to just I felt like so disconnected and I felt like the the in terms of like the cold case I felt like it was pretty obvious what happens and so that part was a little bit not as enjoyable because it was very predictable but I also besides that though I did find the ending to be really fun and exciting and it was just such a page turner and very intense so I did like that so even though this wasn't my favorite of the series it was pretty well done so like I said I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars it wasn't bad but it just wasn't my favorite of the series but I think now like now that we're getting Tracy settled into this new position I feel like the next book will be a little bit better. So for the month of May, I was hosting the Diversathon. So for this month's topic, it was books set in Canada. And so for this one, this was a book that I read in grade five and it was like everyone was obsessed with this book because we used it as part of our unit. And it is Terry by Douglas Coupland. And for those of you who don't know, Terry Fox was a man who ran across Canada with a prosthetic leg in order to raise money um, raise money for cancer awareness and it just kind of follows his story of him growing up his experience like just with like running across there like he's very much a very prominent figure in um, Canadian history he's still very much um, idolized and he's very much a prominent historical figure and so like I said I was very obsessed with this book and I was happy to read it again because it was super nostalgic because I remember in grade five that was the last time I was in school in Canada um, so I don't know I this is what I think of what I think of that but yeah like it was honestly super nostalgic I think this book could have gone more into depth like I feel like this one just kind of very much kind of brushes the surface and I think he does mention that there are other books you can look at if you're wanting to learn more and like kind of go into more in depth of like a biography of Terry this one is kind of just an overview but I think this is really good if you're not familiar who he is I think this is a good book to kind of look at I don't know if you could get this book here in the states but um yeah I love this book it had really good pictures had good description so I gave this a four out of five stars like I said I really enjoyed it and if you want to learn more about him I'm sure there's like things you probably could search on YouTube as well but such an amazing story and he very much inspired me actually to go and pursue my master's in orthotics and prosthetics like especially looking at now at, with like my clinical view it's just amazing that he was able to accomplish this but 
yeah, if you're wanting to learn more about unique Canadian history, then go check out um, more about Terry Fox. I apologize, the birds are a little bit chirpy this morning. Um, but the next two books I ended up picking up were um, The Long Way Home and The Nature of the Beast. And this is kind of going along with my Inspector Gamache um, marathon that I am currently going through. I'm almost done. I will be all caught up by the end of June and I'm very proud about that. But I love this series. I think there's something really unique about this series and that makes it stand out and I'm sure you guys are very uh, tired of me talking about this series but it is honestly so amazing. So the basic premise of this series is fo we follow Inspector, uh, Chief Inspector Gamache who is head of the homicide department in the Suarte which is like the police department in Quebec and a lot of his murders takes place or involve people from this small quaint town called Three Pines and it kind of reminds me of Stars Hollow, that small quaint found family type of town. And it kind of goes off from there. So this one, The Long Way Home, deals with Clara and she and Peter ended up taking a break for a year and so when he was supposed to come back he doesn't show up so she's very concerned about his well-being and this one's kind of like a missing person case which I really enjoyed. And then The Nature of the Beast involves this kind of town child who is very much kind of elaborates a lot of things. He just exaggerates all of these stories and everything and everyone knows he's lying but one day he comes running out of the forest claiming he saw this massive gun and then the next day he's found murdered and it kind of goes off from there. But as always these are so good. I gave these a four out of five stars. I generally love this series and with every book we get more and more character, character development. We get more just kind of understanding of these characters and yeah I just love this like I said like this is one of my favorite series now of all time and I will be caught up with it in June by the end of June and I'm gonna be feel like so triumphant but also sad that I'll have to wait a year in between books but nevertheless if you're looking for a good crime series I highly recommend you check this book out so next I ended up picking up The House on Mango Street and this is a book that I read for my book club with my lab mate and her friends and this is something that is very different from what I tend to read. It was a very quick read but it is basically a compilation of vignettes. I think that's what you call them um, but essentially they're like short like they could be like a page a couple pages of this character's journey and like different perspectives of her throughout growing up and I like appreciate the narrative and what it was trying to talk about and just kind of show what it was like growing up in a lower income family in a city that wasn't necessarily like the best area. I appreciate that part but like that type of writing really doesn't do anything for me like in particular like poetry when we would have to read them at school I'm like this literally means nothing to me. Like so I don't think I'm like the client like the the ideal reader for this. I really ex respect what she did but it just wasn't my cup of tea so I gave this a one out of five stars like I said I don't like this type of stylistic writing but if you do like I think it had really good themes in here there were like a few good quotes that I did enjoy but like I said this wasn't my kind of ideal reading situation so but if you find yourself liking those type of things this book is really well loved like I think it's taught in like high schools and universities and so like it's very well loved and respected in kind of the literary community but it's not really something that you know, I would gravitate towards reading. Alrighty, so finally I am proud to say that I found a book club pick for this year that I actually enjoyed because the first two ones have been, I feel like, misses and a lot of you guys have not liked them as well, but I am happy to say that I finally have one that I think you guys will like and I was happy to say that I liked it as well and it was The Paragon Hotel by Lindsay Fay and this is a historical fiction mystery novel. So it follows a story of a girl named Alice who ends up arriving in Portland with two bullet wounds, a bag full of $50,000 and a lot of secrets. So when she ends up getting um, rescued by um, Max who what was basically they were called George who were 
black people who worked on trains that were kind of like the butler service staff and so he ends up taking her to the Paragon Hotel to get medical treatment and while she's there she ends up forming these really strong relationships with the residents of the hotel but the KKK are slowly kind of closing in onto the city they are seeing more violence towards blacks they're getting harassed there's more kind of vandalism around their hotel so everyone is very concerned about this so when a boy from the hotel goes missing everything kind of takes off and goes from there um, but we also kind of get a dual storyline of Alice kind of growing up in this in like the Bronx area her story of how she eventually came into the mafia and then how it eventually led to her getting shot and eventually subsequently being on the run so I like it took me I will say it took me about a hundred pages to really get invested in the story but not only was is the dialogue she writes it in the way that they used to kind of talk back then and it's hard to kind of really grasp what they're trying to say sometimes but I feel like the first 100 pages or so are very much focused on laying down the foundation of the story introducing the characters introducing like kind of the general setting of this novel and so once I got past that 100 page point, I really was invested in this story. I think this book tackles a lot of important themes and elements that are very much relevant today, in particular racism, violence towards Blacks, like LGBTQ you know, rights and representation, and I think that is very important. And I think she, like, I feel like especially the 1920s era are very much kind of glamorized through like a historical lens but I think this author looks at this era very critically especially like what I was saying with those themes and it, she does a good job at like criticizing the kind of darker aspects of this era that's very much glamorized in American history and showcases the darker sides that we necessarily like to gloss over and I think that's important too because I feel like a lot of the themes that are in here are, st are still very much relevant today even though this was like a hundred years ago. So I think that's really important. I think her cast of characters in here was really well done as well. I really love Blossom and her character and just getting to see everyone that in this hotel setting was really interesting and the ending was good. I just really enjoyed this. So I gave it a four out of five stars. Like I said, we had a rough go at the beginning, but I really want to enjoy it at the end. My only complaint was, not necessarily complaint, but a lot of the criticism I've seen is that a white woman shouldn't have written this novel based on the black and LGBTQ, LGBTQ narratives. And I think she did this in a very respectful and well-researched way, but I'm not the one to say if this was offensive or not. I didn't find it, it was, but I think, like I said, I'm not of the demographic to say if it is or not so see you where there's a little bit of criticism around this especially with like the big plot twist at the end but um nevertheless I think this is a really good it's kind of a, like a noir type feeling as well with like the mafia and everything so yeah I'm happy that we finally have a good book club pick it just you know third time's the charm I guess so that I'm happy we're kind of back on track now with the book club picks Next, I ended up picking up The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, and I was sent an arc of this by the publisher, and this is his newest novel. So if you're familiar with The Silent Patient, which I feel like everyone is at least knows about it, then, um, then you kind of know what this type of book is about, but it is kind of like a psychological thriller mystery type thing. So it follows this girl named Mariana, who's very much still grieving the loss of her husband over a year ago, and when she gets this call from her niece who is studying at Cambridge saying that her best friend has been murdered she literally drops everything to go and see you know be with her niece and figure out what is going on but she is convinced that one of the professors is the one who is the murderer she just can't prove it so she becomes very much obsessed and is determined to figure out who this murderer is and like the story kind of goes off from there and i really like this i think this book like looking at the initial reviews i feel like people either love it or hate it and i think because the expectations like i feel like especially with the silent patient it blew everyone away that everyone's ex expectations are just astronomically high i think it's just best to kind of treat this book as 
as its own entity essentially just like treat it as its own thing and I think I like this one a little bit more than the silent patient I think it I finished this honestly in a day like I couldn't put it down he has very lyrical writing style that just flows really well and the chapters are short so you just kind of like fly through it and I will have a more in-depth spoiler free review of this coming up on its release date so keep your eyes peeled for that but I really enjoyed this I was able to guess like basically from the beginning who the killer was and I was just still like even though I like ha like was certain that this character was the killer I was still invested in the story enough to prove that I was right and I do feel like my only complaint was I feel like the ending and the motives behind what the killer was doing didn't make sense um like it was still a little bit I was like okay I guess like <laughs> I'm like okay and I felt the ending like was a little bit too abrupt um so you don't really get time to process everything it was literally like you get to the climax and then that's it so um that was like my only complaint but I loved how this like I loved basically the point getting to the end um was really fun like I said I finished this in a day so I literally could not put it down but I think like one of the things that I thought about when I heard the synopsis was the Taylor Swift song no body no crime like I think he did it but I just can't prove it and so that's what I was kind of thinking about this but if you're looking for something like that this author like if you get like a dark art academia feel this um, author also integrates like Greek tragedy and mythology in here so if that is like up your alley then I think you'll really like this like I said I gave this a four to five stars overall I really enjoyed it and lastly I have the hunting party which was another book that I read for my book club with my lab mates and so this one was basically follows a group of friends um, who go to this remote like castle and lodge in uh, Scotland and as they're there there is a murder that takes place with one of the people from that main friend group but we don't know who that person is so we get to basically the um, we get kind of the past narrative of the events ultimately leading up to the murder and I think this had a really good premise I think it had a lot of potential but I feel like the characters were just horrible people and I was like I don't think murder is ever justifiable but I think the world would be a better place without this character in it it was like basically the thing like everyone was horrible no one was really likable they were just really snooty and I'm like how are these people friends like they seem like horrible people and they hate being around each other and so I don't know it was just like hard to be invested in a murder investigation when you really don't care about the potential victims of it and yeah I think like this was I feel like I said like it had a lot of potential but it wasn't enjoyable I think the ending was fun just kind of with everything kind of exploding and just how it is with like these crime thrillers that lead up to like the climax and it's just crazy like I enjoyed that and I think the part of like the woods was a little bit freaky in terms of how it's described and like they think they see people kind of in the forest but it's dark and like all this stuff and like pe feeling watched from the forest and like that is like my fear like I'm surrounded by forest and I'm on the main floor so I'm like my biggest fear is that someone's just gonna be peering into my window <laughs> so like I could get to the fear of that so I gave this a two out of five stars like I said it wasn't enjoyable I kind of figured out early on who the killer was who was the person who was murdered all those things so it wasn't that exciting but I can see why some people really like this one like when I was looking at the Goodreads review as either people like it or hate it there's kind of no in between I was kind of more on the hate side because like I said the characters were not likable at all they were just not good people so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video I sorry the neighbors are mowing the lawn so Luckily this is at the end now, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what are some of the books that you read this month and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.